In our last episode, we parched corn. We spent time over the fire uh, getting these kernels ready, parching them up. Now we have to prepare them, turn them into something we can actually eat. Thanks for joining us today. Let's hear what Benjamin Franklin has to say about this next step. He says, that which is parched is pounded into powder in mortars. This being sifted will keep long fit for use. An Indian will travel far and subsist long on a small bag of it, taking only six or eight ounces of it per day mixed with water. So we've got our mortar here and we need to pound it up into a powder. That's what we're gonna do. Well, let's get to pounding this stuff up. I've got my, uh, my mortar. Now this one is not as big as they probably typically would have had. I mean, you can imagine a log this big around and maybe this tall and a much bigger stamper. This is a very small version, but it's gonna work nonetheless. Probably a lot more portable. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I think all these are probably gonna work very similarly. Let's uh, start out with this. And I'm not gonna fill this cavity up too big, but let's, let's see what happens. Boy, this crushes so easily. This is very brittle stuff. You can start to see it. It only takes a few seconds and really all the kernels are already broken. If you've ever tried to do this with real corn, you'd know that you'd be pounding on this thing forever to get this to break up. So this is, makes it so much easier. I didn't notice it before while I was actually making the parched corn. But as soon as you start to break it up, you get this terrific smell. This stuff smells wonderful. As soon as you've got some of it broken down, uh, the, the real fine stuff is starting to get in the way. So I can actually pour it into our sieve here and then shake out the fine stuff and then put the, the grit right back in. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the Indian corn I did earlier along with the yellow corn because they look almost exactly the same once they're parched. I don't think they're gonna have a lot of different flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this hominy separated to see if it has a different flavor, but we're gonna grind it up the same way we did the other. Here are the two bowls. We've got the, uh, this is the hominy corn or the actual dried hominy that's pounded up after it was uh, toasted, baked, parched. And here's the standard corn, both the Indian corn and the yellow corn mixed up. And uh, of course I've got the grits here left over. Now we're not gonna actually cook these grits, but they would have been prepared by boiling them in water for two, three hours, maybe even four hours to make a special dish. We're not gonna, we don't have time to do that today. Maybe we'll do that in a future episode. But what have we got here? We, this uh, powdered meal would have been eaten in three or four different ways, possibly more, but we've got some very simple ways. This, this would have been taken on the trail and eaten. Basically put this in a leather bag, take it along with you. This is all you've got to eat. You'd mix this with water and we can do that. We can, uh, without even cooking it, take a quantity of this meal. We're gonna put it in a little bowl here and mix it up with an equal quantity of water. Possibly if we're on the trail and we don't want to even start a fire, uh, we can prepare it in this manner and eat it. And it might not be the tastiest thing in the world, but it is uh, sustenance if we have to keep moving. And wow, it looks very palatable, doesn't it? Kind of um, a uh, cold mush. Now maybe we'd let this set a while uh, to soak up. It doesn't necessarily say that. So I guess we're gonna try it out just, just like this. Let's give it a try. Mmm, definitely an interesting flavor. There's a lot of flavor here. I mean, if you just took straight cornmeal, you probably wouldn't think it tasted like anything. This, uh, in its, in its uh, essence right here, um, definitely gives you a, a flavorful feeling. It's sort of like um, eating solid coffee or, you know, coffee grounds maybe. <laughs> but maybe, I don't know, I've never eaten coffee grounds, so it has to be much worse than this. But it's got a, uh, a little bit of a burnt flavor, but that also kind of brings in a saltiness that you wouldn't expect 
out of something that is totally un uh, seasoned at all. So it's actually got a lot of flavor to it, even in this totally cold sense. Let's try maybe baking it up a little bit, seeing if we can make it a little bit more palatable. So let's try cooking this up. I'm gonna add a little bit of water here to our pan. And we're gonna use the Hominy meal this time. Let's stir this up. I don't wanna overcook this. It's uh, it seems to cook up pretty rapidly. Now, if I really wanted this to break down, I'd probably cook this really, really slowly. Maybe I'd uh, take a little brass kettle and uh, make a very uh, a porridge out of it. Um, let's see how warm it is here. Yeah, it's nice and warm. So I didn't necessarily cook it up a whole lot. Um, I just wanted to try this out to see what happens when we get it warm. It did a little bit of cooking here. You could see uh, you don't want to heat this up too quick. Yeah. Well, again, it's got a lot of flavor to it. It's bringing a lot of that burnt flavor in. Uh, so, you know, depending on the kind of taste you want, you might not want to take your parched corn as far as I did. Many of the corn that I used in this kind of really blackened it up. If you like that kind of burnt popcorn taste, then maybe this is the perfect thing for you. I can tell that it definitely would have a lot of flavor compared to some, some bland things. Again, this is completely unseasoned. There's definitely a lot of flavor here. Maybe not something that our modern palates are expecting. So not only can we eat this paste either uh, hot or cold, but there's another way we can actually eat this, and that is as a drink. And this is mentioned in multiple different accounts, and uh, specifically uh, the Iroquois had a drink called Sagamite, where they would take this, this same sort of meal and add it to water, where it's mostly water, and let that set like a tea possibly, and then drink the water off of the top of that leaving the meal behind, maybe even straining it out. So I've let our uh, sagamite, where I'm, they don't actually know exactly what sagamite was like, but I'm guessing here, uh, other drinks were exactly the same kind of way. Uh, let's, let's test this out. I've kind of let this steep for a little while, like you would let tea brew, but it's just in room temperature water. Uh, let's find out what it tastes like. Actually, uh, very nice, slightly flavored water. I'm sure that we could probably brew this in a couple of different ways if we wanted to bring out more of the flavor. But uh, if you wanted to give your water something a little extra, maybe it didn't come from the cleanest source, maybe it's got an off taste to it, this might be a good way to bring some flavor into it and uh, maybe push down the flavors you don't like so much. But there's a lot of different things you can do with this. Uh, one of the last ways, at least we're going to try in this episode, is a simple ash cake. We can take our meal, mix it up with a little water into a paste, and cook it right on the coals. Uh, just like we've done ash cakes before, if you're interested in more on ash cakes and different ways of making them, make sure to check back. I'll put a link down in the description section uh, that points to our other ash cake episodes, or at least episode. Okay, here's our ash cake. It's all cooked up, and um, it's still got some... Um, little coals stuck to it. We can just brush that off. It's a little charred around the edges. We can just break that off and uh, mix into a nice little bread, sort of like cornbread. Again, this is completely unflavored with anything, no salt, no nothing. It's got a nice texture to it. Got that same kind of flavor. Maybe not quite so strong. Actually makes a really good ash cake, um, depending on how you cook your parched corn. Uh, excellent, excellent way to cook it. So there's so many different methods that you can prepare this parched corn and eat it, even in this meal form. So these have been two pretty intense episodes, a lot of information. We did, you know, we parched the corn, then we ground it. We tried different types of cooking methods, different types of corns, and then different kinds of ways to cook it. There's so much to learn about parched corn, and I'm only just skimming the surface. There's more to learn. You know, it's one thing to read it in a book. It's another to actually try it out. We learn so much more when we try these things out rather than just, just reading it, right? 
I love this. I want to thank you for coming along as we try these things out, as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century.